Today on the Blastcast, we discuss the Herald, the upcoming Cutlass and Connie revamps, and a few other fun things. This week on the Blastcast. Let's get to it. Welcome, everyone, to another week of Blastcast. Once again, with me is my Bastion of Common Sense, Lightning Dragon. And this week, uh, relatively slow, but there is some good information out there. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk first about the Herald. They did show uh, pretty much a finished Herald model and the interior and the exterior. And they walked through all the damage states, and it looks very impressive. To me, yeah, this is a ship that I own, and it was an $80 ship when it was first put up as a uh, as a concept and to me the ship is well considering the size of the missiles and weaponry they ended up with and other things like that the ship is probably not going to go for $80 again if it goes up uh, guarantee that the ship's probably going to rocket up to like 150 or something like that because there's a lot more of that ship than we bargain for now uh, they showed it in a flyable state and it looks like that it actually um it's going to be faster than an M50 in a straight line, and having let Lightning Dragon fly by M50, I'm sure you can appreciate that kind of speed, right? So that M50 was awesome. It, uh, I mean, it, it didn't have the same firepower as the Gladius, but the, the thing is, you almost never blacked out, and you have such a small target that people can't hit you, so it's like, oh, it's just, it's not a combat fighter, but it does better than a combat fighter, because the Gladius is broken! Yeah, I took the Gladius out. We, sw we swapped ships out in the Persistent Universe, and I flew his Gladius for I let him fly my M50. And, uh, and the first time it got hit, uh, the engines basically stopped working, and I was flying sideways. I was like, oh, this is not, this is not good. You just I had, lost uh, all control of it. I mean, the, yeah. the damage and potential was all there. The maneuverability was, was good, yeah. obviously, besides all the blackout bullshit. Well, yeah. The thing is that uh, that's clearly a glitch because you know I didn't even, didn't even show any damage on the ship. And I remember when the when the saber came out at first, it had the same problem. First time any sort of missile blew up in a general area of you, your engines would just stop working. You hear this engine power low. I could have swore there was another ship that had that problem too, like the the Gladiator or something. Uh, no. Well, maybe I don't know, but I know it was on the saber. I know that because I I the first time I took it out the flight oh, arena yeah. commander, everything blew up on it. <laughs> well, the thing is, it was completely intact. The ship was completely intact. The shields were up. The hull didn't have a, didn't even visually looked at. It didn't have a scratch on it, but the engines just weren't working anymore. Uh, they fixed that with the saber. Clearly, the Gladius needs some work on that end. Um, so, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to the Herald. Uh, I hope that when it comes out. And since it's supposed to be coming out and flyable in 2.6, that they do have some sort of missions to go with it. If not, it's just going to be kind of one of those fun ships that you just quickly dash to do missions and then dash away. And you can do the, the ICC probe thing because there's very little could. combat in those. Yeah, I mean, you could just, with that kind of speed, you could just zip past all of the pirates, you know, just yeah. ignore them and just get out of the ship. And then, but either way, to me, it's one of those ships that. I love the kind of ships that are uh, multi-crew, like with two or three people, uh, because that's just a nice sweet spot for being online with friends. And my brother really, really regrets giving up the Herald, uh, but the thing is, is that you know he's gonna have access to mine anytime. That's I, we, the way the Lightning Dragon and I approached our ship purchases was that we kind of complement everything that we have. I think the only overlap, like uh, in the group that we have, is. My brother and I both own a Starfarer G, and that's because we're probably to both be going gas harvesting at the same time for our guild. And so that's just efficient to have two harvesters. Uh, they also demonstrated uh, around the verse the new music logic system uh, that's going to be coming out. And what's really great about this is that the last time I really saw a game with this kind of music logic system was the original x-wing game that came out and that was before they came out with the cd version later which had the uh uh which got rid of the midi files and went with uh actually cd music and the midi file version the one that came out in old 3.5 floppy disks uh the music would change tempo it would change the kind of music depending upon what's happening I and mean, you'd be sitting there and it would be really calm soothing music and suddenly right before a star destroyer jumps in it would go dun dun Dun, 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 dun. You know, it was just it was just dun, cool dun, dun, dun. oh it was just cool because it was like this foreshadowing it, it, like you would hear you know it, 
it was like it would start you, something's about to come in and you know, if you remember the scene with the Millennium Falcon right before the TIE fighters come in you know the music goes dun, 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 and it, it, it like oh crap here comes something and so it, it would dynamically change based upon the tempo of the battle and to see them actually do that and actually get to listen to it that was really cool because they're doing it with an actual orchestra so they're actually taking orchestral music and they're actually using that same kind of system and i'm really excited about that it sounded really good and i think music if done right in a game really adds to the immersion it, it's it's a mood setter you know it really i think a star what would star wars be without the music right i mean try to watch star wars it's still a good movie but take the music <laughs> with, away with no music there'd be there'd be no tension Right, the music adds something to it, and that's that's what they. So Pedro Camacho, great work, keep it up. You're really making uh, something special here, and I think you're going to be remembered for it, big big time. Uh, of course, this week we have a another ship boat. Um, it's the Gladius versus the Retaliator. And Gladius. Of, sorry, the Gladiator. Thank you for correcting me on that. Gladiator versus Retaliator, and basically. Um, the winner, of course, will be put on sale. Last week, the Vanguard won, so the Vanguard's on sale again right now. And uh, right now, it looks like, last time I checked, the Retaliator is actually in the lead, uh, which kind of makes sense because, you know, I own a, gla I own a Gladiator, and um, but the, the Retaliator has something nice going for it is the flexibility. You can turn it into a troop transport, a cargo ship, or a bomber. So it has that nice flexibility. Uh, the only thing they really need to do with that is I, I know they're going to be reworking the turrets. The turrets need to be much bigger than size ones because nobody's oh, God, they're, they're worthless. I mean, in, in our little testing that we were doing, we were flying all the different ships and stuff. Um, when I flew the, the Free Fly Super Hornet, compared to the Super Hornet that I flew when we played together, where which was, it only had three weapons but they're all the size threes mm -hmm. going from three size threes to six size ones and size twos because it's the two size ones on the nose and then yeah. the rest of them are size two the the difference in firepower while you have a lot of shots that will connect they don't do enough damage well, so you can you can tear things apart when you have the larger weapons to be so, honest you, you did actually have me uh, even though I couldn't run the turret in the back, the second I saw that you were shooting, I was actually pressing my mouse button because I couldn't actually turn the turret. So we've actually got an extra cast coming up. We we, we played in the <laughs> Persistent Universe for I was it four or five hours together easily. We well, we, played, we played for like five or six hours. Oh, we yeah. combined everything together just in that one day. And we did a lot of we did a lot of footage. He did footage. I did footage. And what I've done is that is what I'm trying to do is I'm taking my footage and his footage and I'm side by siding them and putting them lining them up like frame by frame so basically uh, you can see some of the issues that are right now in the persistent universe like how sometimes uh, what he sees and what I see is not necessarily the same thing which is something of course we hope to see addressed in 3.0 with a new net code but it was a fascinating kind of uh, experience to kind of when you look at the, the footage you see times where you know, for example uh, he's blocking me in a room but he's actually in the hallway and he sees me in the room, but I'm out in the hallway. After, after. Yeah, that and was so, real fun. And so those kind of things, like complete and total uh, desyncing of the game itself from each other. And uh, so, but th that's those are just little minor things. But we spent some time kind of just kind of seeing, since he has a computer now that can finally get in and start playing the game again. Uh, so we decided to really get in there and, and do some weird things like, uh, was it Connie Wreck of Derby too? But anyway. Oh yeah, the, the, the jousting, that was fun. <laughs> oh, God, and and I had, I, my ship was in better condition than yours. Yours was all yellow, mine was all green. We both were missing an engine and uh, I nosed down at the last second and it kills me and you survive it. What? Yes, Jarus wins. Yeah, you know, <laughs> one out of two, <laughs> or one one out of three, I guess. Cause, one out of three. Because the yeah, well, yeah, well we, you, we won't well, spoil the video, but yeah, you, you got the yeah. Well, you you did you did actually kill you did actually kill my M50. You know that was that was I, you I you were over on the right, and I'm like <laughs> okay, you're issues. over on the right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn to the left a little bit and he I, plows like, right my, through my, my nose down, and then it starts grinding and bouncing. It's like what the hell's going on? And you're like what the heck? And I'm like oh, I must be a, 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 I must have bumped you because and then I exploded. And, yeah, then you exploded. <laughs> I, you know what it probably was? It was probably catching the missile racks. 
I don't know. Because don't those know, stick but... out so much farther. I'm sitting there like, okay, here you are. What the hell? <laughs> so like, yeah, first doing? time the Grim Hex takes, takes me like a half an hour to get there. And, I and he, pile dri- <laughs> he pile drives right through me. Like, thanks a lot, dude. So <laughs> anyway. i land here. <laughs> <laughs> right through me. So uh, also another big news is that there are actually, next to the chopping block, is the Cutlass Black rework. Of course, if they're doing the Cutlass Black, that means you can imagine that uh, the blue and the red are also right in that kind of that same area because there's a lot of overlap on that. And right after that, they're actually going to be doing the Connie Taurus and the uh, the Phoenix as well. And they said that the 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 Connies are going to take one tenth the time that it took to originally do the turnaround on the revamp of the Andromeda because of uh, a lot of the a lot of things that they they finished on the Andromeda will carry over to those models as well. Uh, and they want to have them up and flying and ready. So they also mentioned a little while ago the Aquila being something that they're working on. So you should have all the Connie vari- variants flyable. And I would imagine as well that when the Phoenix comes out, that's going to go back on sale too. And and I'm honestly really tempted to take my LTI Andromeda and upgrade it to a Phoenix. Because the Andromeda for me is not a cargo ship. Uh, it's a utility ship. Like I don't care if I lose half the cargo, but I get a ground vehicle. I get a better Merlin. And I get a hot tub, so you know, there's that too. Win win. Uh, yeah, well, they said they fixed the hot tub issue with that. The hot tub actually is going to be basically the way they described it. It folds down into the floor when you're not using it, and then it comes up and out. So, uh, I'm interested to see where that is. And, and but to me, the the Andromeda, why I would get it, is a bigger power plant. It has the size nine anti missile systems automated. Well, they're not size systems. nine. They're class, well, class nine. nine. Last night, sorry, I keep saying size, but the thing is, so is that'd that, be pretty ridiculous. I got size huge. nine missiles, but what are they for blowing up other yeah. missiles. <laughs> it's basically the sturdiest of, of, of the constellations, and um, so having the ability to have a ground vehicle in it, having uh, the higher class of Merlin, and having a better power plant and whatnot. And have better defenses. To me, I look at it as a mobile boardroom for the killed. Like, hey, we're gonna meet up and let's have to sit around the table and discuss stuff. Or it can be in space, it can be on a planet, whatever. And I kind of look at it as also kind of like a mobile home away from home. So, and it's got a really big bed. So, you know, about so you. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I am not Captain Kirk or Zap Brannigan. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, so I get- made it with a woman. Inform the men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that Brannigan? But anyway, guys, so that's really kind of the, the, the crux of all the information that's come out this so far this week. And uh, of course, there's been the standard debates and stuff on the forums and whatnot. We're going to see flight model changes probably in 2.6 when they get the, uh, the 2.0 uh, flight model fleshed out. Oh, yeah, one last thing. They did actually go through on uh, reverse uh, the verse, they did talk about the new. Uh, patching system they're trying to build and how they're really close to having that done. Basically, that's going to be a big deal for every one of us out there. You, anyone who's downloaded these patches, they're 20 plus gigs. Uh, oh, well, imagine now being able to download like, you know, 500 megs. Or maybe there's something wrong with the ship. They can just patch that ship, and they don't have you don't. So a lot of times with our builds, we don't they don't fix little problems like immediately. At least on our end, they may fix them on theirs, but we won't see them until the next build. And with the new system. They can actually go ahead and say, fix that individual problem. Give us a patch that day. Download 10 megabyte file. Boom, we're back into the game. And that is going to be amazing, I think, for not only for saving them money on what we have to download, but also turnaround on development. Because as we give feedback, they can give quicker turnaround. And I think that's just going to help the whole iter- iterative process. I can't speak today. Iterative process. I give up. It's going to help the whole development process. We'll go with that. <laughs> See, my speech impediment coming out, so that's one of those things I have to try to get through once in a while. Uh, so basically, uh, yeah, the whole development process uh, will be, I think it will help the turnaround on that and make it uh, overall uh, just a better experience for everybody as as they go through the issue councils and they see those things and they can just jump on them immediately and we can see the results so anyway guys so that's it for this week uh, as I said we're gonna be an extra cast we're gonna be showing you uh, we're giving commentary on that as I put together this side-by-side video and we're gonna talk about what we experienced and some of the things that we saw and like to get your feedback both on this video and of course on the one upcoming and your experiences and uh, Well, we'll catch you next week, and thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Today on our first episode of Which Ship, we're going to be discussing four ships of around $60 value, 
what we like about them, what we dislike about them, and overall, which one we think is our favorite. Let's get to it. 